Hey guys, this is Cambridge IGCSE Biology, February March 2020, paper 4. Question 1, part A. Figure 1.1 is a diagram of the human gas exchange system. It shows the lungs. Identify the structures labeled A, B, and C in figure 1.1. A is indicating to this part of the diagram. It allows the transport of air to each of the lungs. It's called the bronchus. Then B is indicating to this passageway, this is trachea. And C is indicating to this area, it's called the diaphragm. Explain how the structures in the gas exchange system cause inspiration. Inspiration means breathing in, basically inhaling. To allow air inside your body, firstly, the diaphragm here needs to contract. So as it contracts, it will become like this, allowing more space over here. Then at the same time, the external intercostal muscles over here will contract as well. As a result, the ribs will move upwards or outwards, and the overall volume of your lungs will increase. Then the pressure inside your lungs will decrease as you suddenly have much more volume inside your lungs, and air will be able to enter to fill up the extra volume that you have and equalize the pressure. This is one of the common questions and really the most basic thing you need to know from this lung chapter. So memorize the whole thing according to this sequence. Part B. A person who does not smoke can be exposed to tobacco smoke from other people smoking. This is called passive smoking. Researchers studied the effect of exposure to tobacco smoke on the development of lung cancer in three groups of women who did not smoke. Group 1. No exposure to tobacco smoke. Group 2. Low level exposure to tobacco smoke. And Group 3. High level exposure to tobacco smoke. The results are shown in Table 1.1. Three different groups, it was carried out on thousands of women, and they counted the number of women who died from lung cancer, and calculated the percentage of women who died from lung cancer. Calculate the percentage of women in group 2 who died from lung cancer. Write your answer to two significant figures in table 1.1. So we need to fill up the space. To calculate the percentage, you divide the number of women who died from lung cancer with the total number of women studied, which is 44,184 and multiply by 100. So you'll get 0 0.1946 and so on, but we need to round this to 2SF, so it's 0.19%. Many countries have laws that ban smoking in public buildings. Discuss the evidence from Table 1.1 that supports these laws. Through this experiment and the results, we have learned that through passive smoking, people can also get lung cancer and die from it. So as a result, the government decided to ban smoking in public so that by this law, it's going to reduce the exposure to tobacco smoke and there will be lower risk of dying from lung cancer. So we can write about that. And also since we have to use the evidence from the table, we can state some numbers from this table. So let's say for group 1, only 0.15% of them died of lung cancer and they were not exposed to tobacco smoke at all. Then group 3, there were 0.22% of women who died of lung cancer and they were the ones who had high level exposure to tobacco smoke. And this shows that the non-smokers or the passive smokers can die from lung cancer due to smoking which proves that the greater the exposure to tobacco smoke, the greater the risk of dying from lung cancer. Smoking has been found to increase the risk of developing diseases other than cancer. Stay to other diseases that can be caused by smoking. It's good to memorize this kind of stuff. First one is the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or you can just write COPD. So this is basically all the diseases that affect your lungs, gives you shortness of breath, and you'll always be coughing. Then next is the coronary heart disease, in short, CHD. 
Question 2, part A. Figure 2.1 shows the transfer of materials between blood and tissues. The blood flows from the arterial towards the venule. The lymphatic vessel is here. And these arrows over here show the flow of blood. And the tiny arrows inside this shows the transfer of materials. Complete table 2.1 by stating the names of the fluids. Writing yes if the fluid contains red blood cells or no if the fluid does not contain red blood cells. Alright, A is this one. The one that goes right through between the arterial and the venule. And they've already told you that it's the lymphatic vessel. It's called the lymph. It doesn't contain any red blood cells. The red blood cells will be just inside their blood vessels. They don't just enter anywhere. They always stay inside the blood vessels. Then B, it's fluid B, indicating this area. This is just tissue. And nope, they do not contain any red blood cells. It's not a type of a blood vessel. So it's tissue and no. State the name of the process by which oxygen is transferred from fluid B to the cells. How do you transfer oxygen from tissues to the cells? It's by diffusion. So it's pretty simple, they just go through the cell membranes. Explain why cells need oxygen. So what does the oxygen do in our bodies? Their main function is to carry out the aerobic respiration. And what happens if you carry out the aerobic respiration? As its product, it releases energy. And energy is just used everywhere in our bodies. You can just say maybe carry out active transport, or digestion, anything is fine, but as long as you write aerobic respiration for the release of energy, you'll get your two marks. Describe the functions of arterioles in the skin. Well, arterioles being blood vessels, they're there to carry blood, but they're specifically there to carry blood to capillaries. They have the ability to control the amount of blood that flows through the capillaries because they're just basically the passageway. And this is extremely useful during homeostasis. When your body senses that there's a change in temperature in your surroundings, it will try to maintain your body temperature by either vasoconstriction or vasodilation. And this is where the arterial works. It tries to send less blood flow through the capillaries or more blood flow through the capillaries to maintain your body temperature and that's its function. Part C. Describe the functions of lymph nodes in the lymphatic system. They're there to detect if any pathogens are entering your body and defend against diseases. So they contain lymphocytes which produce antibodies to fight off the pathogens and they also filters the lymph, which allows it to scan through your body and check for any diseases. Part D. Lacteals are part of the lymphatic system. State where in the body lacteals are found. They're not everywhere, they are in small intestine. Or you can also say villi, because villi is basically in small intestine, if you want to be more specific. Describe the role of lacteals. This time it's not about the pathogens and scanning your body, it's for fat absorption or fat transport. Question 3, part A. One of the characteristics of living organisms is sensitivity. Define the term sensitivity. Alright, it's one of those Mrs. Gran. You must memorize all the definitions for Mrs. Gran. Well, sensitivity is the ability to detect or sense stimuli in the internal or external environment and to make appropriate responses. You need every single word from this to get full marks. Part B. State the names of two sense organs. Well, think about your five senses. Your eyes, skin, tongue, and all that. But just write eye and skin because that's what's in the mark scheme. Part C. Scientists investigate the effect of adrenaline on blood glucose concentration in rats. The rats were put into two groups. Group A was given an injection of adrenaline. And group B was given an injection that did not contain adrenaline. 
The blood glucose concentrations of the rats in both groups were monitored for 3 hours after the injections. The rats did not eat for 12 hours before the investigation or while they were being monitored. This is to prevent the blood glucose concentration increasing due to the food that they consumed. The results are shown in figure 3.1. This is when they were injected, so the blood glucose level was already decreasing. And this group A, the one that had adrenaline, their blood glucose concentration increased rapidly, then decreased after some time, and together they all just decreased as the time passed. So just why group B was given an injection that did not contain adrenaline? Yeah, you might think that, oh, we're just trying to find the effect of adrenaline. Why did you give an injection without it? Well, it's as a control. You need a group that carried out the same experiment in same conditions, but just without the adrenaline to compare and see if blood glucose was affected by the injection of adrenaline or some other factor. Describe and explain the results shown in figure 3.1 for group A. Okay, don't get scared. You have like 10 points to write about. Of course, you don't have to write all of them. It's just 5 mark question and we can definitely get more than 5 points from the graph. First, be aware that this question is in two parts. Describe and explain the results. Well, I've kind of described the graph just now. So firstly, before the injection, we're talking about this part. The blood glucose level was already decreasing. And there's nothing wrong with it. You're using your energy as the time passes. So that's okay. And then after the injection, the group which had adrenaline had a very steep increase in their blood glucose concentration. And it's good to include a figure from a graph. So if you read off this maximum point, it's 4.75. So we're going to write this later. Okay, and that after it reached its maximum height, it started to decrease gradually and it decreased even lower than the initial point. After that, it just continued to decrease just like the group that did not get any adrenaline. And that's it for the description. We just have to explain it now. So the blood glucose concentration increased after the injection because due to the presence of adrenaline in your body, glycogen was converted to glucose in the liver to be used for aerobic respiration. And the connection between them is that if you get adrenaline in your body, your body will start thinking that there is some kind of an emergency situation and that you will need much more energy. So you will try to carry out aerobic respiration and for aerobic respiration, you need glucose. So that's why your body converted glycogen to glucose. Okay, then after the adrenaline had its effects, the blood glucose decreased, either because the glucose was just all used up in higher rates of respiration, or maybe the insulin was secreted in your body to cause blood glucose concentration to decrease. Your body has its own system, which is homeostasis, to make sure that your blood glucose concentration is not too high or not too low. Part D. Another group of rats was given an injection that did not contain adrenaline. These rats were given food after 2 hours of monitoring. Predict the changes of blood glucose concentration in this group of rats. Sketch a line to show your prediction on the graph in figure 3.1. So this is a new group of rats that did not get any adrenaline but they got food this time. While well, having food makes your blood glucose concentration to increase, but they said that it was given only after 2 hours, just show that it has increased. Part E. Describe two effects of adrenaline on the body other than a change in blood glucose concentration. Well, like I've just said, adrenaline makes your body to think that you are in this emergency situation. Well, think about when you are nervous, like right before a presentation or before participating in a competition. How do you feel? So with the rush of adrenaline, your breathing rate will increase and your heart rate will increase and your blood pressure will increase. Also, you might not notice it yourself, but your pupils will be dilated as a response to the adrenaline. 
The rest of the paper will be on my next video, so stay tuned and subscribe to get ready for your IGCSE exams. Show your support by liking and leaving a comment on this video. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and God bless you guys. Bye!